This is the word to go, yo. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Grown Ass Women, our very first episode. We could not be more excited to have you here with us. This is the show where we're going to be talking very important nonsense, and I couldn't do it without my lovely friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey James is here all the way from Virginia. How you doing, Mickey? I'm doing amazing. I'm so excited. Uh, I feel good. I feel good to be doing something during all this madness right now. Totally, totally. And if you didn't already notice our little creature, our pink creature down there, we've got Lisa, Lisa Marie Barron. How are we doing? Awesome, awesome. I'm very, I'm so excited to do this with you guys. Um, couldn't ask for a better friend to do this with. And um, I just, this is be a bumpy ride. So yeah. strap on your seatbelts, right? Strap right? it in. Yeah. <laughs> You've been warned, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I have to ask you, I mean, especially, I'm gonna go to Lisa first. Who are you wearing and what are you drinking? Well. Oh my God, we're gonna I get it. Wearing... <laughs> yeah, I can't. I don't know who I'm wearing, but I did get it at a, a Comic Con um, or an Anime Con. Uh, but you know, guys know how what a nerd I am. And in the inside and out, I'm a nerd. Mm -hmm. That badass chick you saw on TV is not that badass. <laughs> yeah, you well, are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it a, it's a dinosaur, right? Oh, what am I drinking? Am I drinking? Am I think? Well, I we made a are. mixture. Okay, I made mixture of this fine, expensive uh, uh, vodka, $9.99 at CVS, Key Club. Oh. Um, Pineapple juice uh, from the dollar store, uh, passion fruit citrus. Ooh. Uh, the most expensive thing I got, ooh, I just spilled the whole entire thing. Ooh. Shaker. I did. I spilled it all. Um, yeah, so I already poured my drink, so that's important. Um, this was the most expensive thing on this ingredient. Oh, my Joe, God. We're on that quarantine budget. Might as well. Yes. Look at this. It's because we told we said we were all gonna make our home versions of our little quarantinis. Yeah. Look, you have an umbrella. That's so good. I did. I went all out. This is not this you is serious, you guys. It's oh Dino God. Island running wild, ladies and gentlemen. That's so I haven't cool. tasted it yet. Da, na, 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 na. What are you guys drinking? What are you guys drinking? M Mickey, what do you have? You got a little concoction of your own, eh? I see my little martini cup. We love Cowboys, Cowboys Nation. Just gonna put that out and there. And you made um, that cup. You made that cup, right? I didn't make this cup. I had this cup made for my sister, Susan, because we're both Cowboys fans. So I have the other one, which I took a shot out of, um, which is gonna serve as said shot glass. Um, and then this one. So I had this pair made for her. Um, so I found them and I was like, oh, I'm gonna use these for our first episode. So cheers and cheers to Susan. What am yeah. I drinking? Mm -hmm. I can't wait. It looks it looks fruity and delicious. What, what, what did you already it drink? It is fruity and delicious. <laughs> this is um, a redneck, uh, a redneck um, special, I should say. So I did some deep eddy, Ooh. lemon, Ooh. vodka, Ooh. the vatskis, mm. um, you know, little Tito's. Ooh, you know, I love oh, Tito. wow. Tito's is my not favorite. Fancy. It's not <laughs> a grand oh, legacy, on. is it? Don't let me fool you here, because I put a little squirt of the Kool-Aid in there. Low calorie. And Low so calorie. Public, to get that Publix lemon lime, oh you know, for a, little spritz, for a little spritz on the top. You know, it sounds really good. It's fantastic. That actually, it does. Yeah. Is, is it that really good? really, really good. I feel like I should be drinking it out of a solo cup and not my Cowboys cup, but this is, this is as good as it gets, ladies. This is like pinky up fancy stuff. It's fancy. Well, you guys had so many different ingredients in your drink, and I really took the time to create a very specific recipe for mine. So my quarantini is um, half Stoli vodka, half- Oh my um, God, look at that glass. <laughs> look at the size of that thing. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like the big gulp of, of quarantini glasses. So my quarantini <laughs> is half Stoli vodka, half Grey Goose vodka. For a little extra flavor, I added a splash of vodka. And then an extra <laughs> shot of vodka and an ice cube. <laughs> Is that Alan's approval? Your hubby? Oh. Approval? No. No. In all in all seriousness, we're we're kidding. Well, at least I'm kidding about mine, or am I? <laughs> But we actually do have um, a very exciting uh, little gaw venture. 
uh, coming up for you on our social media channels. We are sharing a recipe for an, a posh quarantini, if you should choose to partake, and I think you should. So check out our social media channels. And by the way, guys, we're going to put all of our social media handles at the end of the show. And if you want to discuss the show, which hopefully you do, please use our official hashtag, uh, GawTV. So we're going to put that on screen for you. Uh, ladies, I have to ask, I mean, I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but we're all at home. We're all on lockdown. How have you been handling it so far? What have you been up to? Is it, do you have good days, bad days? What's going on? Mickey, you first, huh? Mickey, Mickey, oh, gosh. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Eat me. Um, I feel like I've been busy. I still- Slip him a Mickey. Like... Slip him a Mickey. Slip him a Mickey. <laughs> There's a t-shirt. <laughs> Slip him a Mickey. <laughs> um, I've been so busy. I feel like I've been busy. You know, obviously we've been working on this and this has kept me like, busy and on my toes just thinking and I'm excited so I've been excited about that but like Donovan has loved it because I'm home all day every day I haven't been at work you know I'm still coming back from an injury and I was like announcing but since we got all put on lockdown I haven't been back and so I'm like okay but I've been enjoying it I'm just doing a lot of yard work I've, I've been doing a lot of yard work like cleaning up cleaning up the barns where the horses are all this stuff. I'm just like oh my goodness so and then you just instantly me. did the, uh, your, that, that thing in your backyard. I did. I did. Off. And then, of course, I built about three train tracks a day. I don't know if you know that. She's been working on the railroad all the live long day. Day, oh, day, day. day. I'm not. <laughs> Actually, we're going to get back to the fire pit in a second because I have something to show you guys. But, Lisa, how are you uh, enjoying lockdown on Dino Island? <laughs> Uh, well, as, as you know, I tell you guys stories. I send you videos of my homeless uh, adventures, uh, mm -hmm. the homeless people on the streets and stuff like that from my window. Um, yeah. I live in downtown San Diego, Gaslam District. And um, I've been working at um, Buca de Beppo. And I'm, I'm actually like, back in the restaurant industry, which I actually love. It's more people oriented. You know, I, you know me, I'm a social butterfly. And I, I just love it. I'm, and I'm glad about this company because they're doing a lot of charity work which you know me and charity you know we go hand in hand I'm trying to be funny and it's not <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, no, but I'm, it's, 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 no but I am having a blast doing it it's honestly it's like but it's, I'm not working every single day it's just like a couple times a week that kind of thing but um, it's keeping me busy um, it's forcing me like like Mickey said she's doing her yard work and stuff like that my place is so clean i steam clean my carpets like twice a week and i wish you could have a party over here and have people over because it's so nice but you know quarantine yeah let me drink to that quarantini let's let's Martini. have a drink i'm out, I'm out. i gotta pour some more go girl i have a little tiny cup careful, careful the top i have the top a... because mine fell off Cheer oh. cheers cheers i love Lovely. you lady and you know cheers. what? Cheers to all of you guys that are that are suffering lockdown too. We know how you feel, so cheers, cheers to that. Cheers to that. It's the best thing. all the thing. Yeah, I, I I will say that you know I get a lot of people on Twitter that are kind of like I'm. Have, I say how are you everyone doing? And and some people have bad days. You have good days, dude. My advice, not that I'm anyone to give advice, but allow yourself those bad days where you just kind of like do nothing, quote unquote bad days, and you just sort of, you know. Don't beat yourself up about having an off day and feeling a little depressed. It happens to all of us. I have days where I'm super productive and, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm in my office working, whatever. Other days, I'm just like, you know what? This is an off day for me. And it's kind right. of that's a, that's, a, that's a Netflix, Amazon movie day. Exactly. And I think is. all of us yeah. were the same. You know, we travel all the time. And a lot of my friends are like, you travel, especially on the weekends all the time. How are you doing so well? And I'm like, you know what? I'm giving myself a break. Like, I, I would get very antsy being at home. But I, like, like Mickey said, I'm finding things to do around the house. I'm finding things to do that I never always use the excuse, oh, I don't have time to do that. Well, now I do. Right. So, but isn't it weird? Because we travel all the time, like, to be home. It's odd, isn't it? It's odd it to is. actually have the time to do all those things that you said, oh, I'm going to do that, but you just didn't have time to do. And so that's yeah. like, you know. And I think that, you know, the, the, the big thing is that it's different for everyone because, some people are completely out of work and you know it can't aren't making any money and thank god for those stimulus checks going out to them you know what i mean but they're to how how are they going to be able to survive and pay their bills if it wasn't for all these little breaks and and still i feel like a lot of people are suffering and you know who's to know what like people's personal situations are if they've been stuck in a house with somebody for a oh, yeah. month at this point 
you know? It is crazy that, um, like, in my elevator going into my apartment, um, it's like that you cannot be evicted during this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, um, you're not, you know, and they're, they're be being very lenient about rent. We can be a little bit late, that, that kind of thing, and um, which is great, but you do see the suffering and stuff like that. And um, I think it, Mickey said a good point, like it is forcing us to stay home yeah. and kind of uh, having family time. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. I, I do want to um, do that. Remember, I survived the corona. My, my relationship survived the coronavirus <laughs> or, the, or the COVID-19. Because you, you are forced to people are like spend a lot of room. time with your loved one. Pardon? <laughs> Yeah, and like people, I, I hate to say it, but I, I'm, people with kids too, they're like, take these kids away from me. I don't want to homeschool. Damn. Yeah. I know. There's a whole new appreciation, I think, being given to a lot of the teachers and the education system of how much work that they actually do. And I think that they go underappreciated and underpaid for gosh, especially here yeah. in the United States. They're so underpaid that it's like a whole new level of appreciation of where parents are realizing how much work these teachers do because in the daytime they're pretty much the parents when you think about it like they're like parenting right. your right, child right so and also too it's like um the, and the healthcare workers you know like at, mm -hmm. um like at my restaurant we went to go to, um give out um, at Rady's Children's Hospital to the nurses um out there to as a thank you the restaurant provided some meals for them and stuff like that mm -hmm. um which is it's, just, it's very minor but at the same time it's it, it means a lot do you know what I mean it's yeah. you know right. but uh and also the grocery store workers and Costco workers. Yeah. Like we're so lucky that, and, and my and God, thank God, my Dollar Tree is open. And my ninety nine <laughs> cents. Love a Dollar Tree. Store. <laughs> I I can't I can't live without it. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> I'm up on my. Dollar. I love I it. Ninety nine cent store. I know. I do. Uh, is yours not open? Mickey, you're oh, no, I love a good five and below. I'll be honest. I, I love a good, I like the Dollar Tree, but I feel like Dollar Tree is like, hmm, I love a good five and below. And I don't know if you guys had five and below. Then if you don't, I, mean, I, I travel. Sorry. I would I'm think of what the equivalent would be in England because I've been to stores that are very similar, but everything is five dollars or below. And you can get phone chargers, um, the little power oh. cables, oh. cords, balls room decor you know a funny Ball little five and below i think i've seen that film and the sequel <laughs> i think but that five below mickey when we uh, like uh val we used to travel on the road a lot and uh when i saw the five below because i got a lot of my ring gear from five below did you did I? yeah if they have awesome, right i mean it they doesn't last long it doesn't last long maybe last one match I hate when it doesn't I last that long. Was Rainbow. What? The rainbow? The rainbow? Oh, oh, rainbow. Does that still exist? I don't yes, know. Yes, it does. I spent $79 does? at a rainbow last time I was in New York City, and I found the most amazing finds. Rainbow, if you're listening, girl, I am so obsessed. So many great, like, show tops, as we would call them, you know, when you're doing, like, you know, you need a little bit of a sexy going out top. Um, I bought so much stuff there. I'm talking, I had, like, two bags full of stuff. For, I think it was $79. So rainbow. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, I always loved those stores is because you could only wear those tops on TV once, right. maybe twice and get, and be, because not only because the quality probably was going to fall apart, maybe, but two, because you're on national television. So you really could only get one or two uses out of, yeah. unless it was actual gear that you were having made or an actual like suit or a specific piece just like random tops and stuff you wore once and then that was it. And so it's like, so sit there and spend, you know, whatever, every time, you know, Yeah. Which, which they don't call me chick flair for nothing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which it, it comes to mind that, you know, I think um, we might need to do a whole episode about what frugal fashionistas we are, because we all are really good about, like you said, we have to, um, you know, being on TV or photo shoots or whatever it is, we have to have like a, a constantly evolving wardrobe. It sounds really ridiculous and really pretentious in, in some ways, but that's why we, we shop the way we shop and we're frugal about it because you wear one thing to a premiere and a photo shoot, people remember it. And like, here's a funny yeah. story about that. Um, and then I have a good question for y'all in a second, but I went to but a also signing once that I was gonna- also tell them that, about, they also tell them that we're independent contractors. So we pay for our own um, costumes. We, we sure do. Our hotels. 
uh, rental people rental don't cars. know that. So, yeah, no, no, it's, just, it's not provided to us. So that's how why we have to be frugal. Yeah, the only thing that's cool about that is that we have to buy it. Is I think it really does sort of let us um, express our personal style. But yeah, people, I think people think right. they just like give us these clothes, and it's like no, everyone's you know right. creating right. things on their own, which is cool. Right. But I went to a signing one time, and I thought about wearing this dress that I hadn't worn in years. Right. I was like, it was a green dress, and I thought, oh, you know, no one's gonna remember that dress. It's fine. I'm gonna wear it to a New York signing I did like three years ago. I was gonna wear it to a different signing. I get to the signing and someone says, oh, I brought a picture of you from like three or four years ago. Here it is. I wasn't wearing the dress, but the dress I was going to wear was the dress in the photo. So that would have been the, the, the new picture of the fan and I would have been in the photo from years ago. So I, maybe that doesn't matter. That's happened, to me. That's happened to me. Happened, does that happen to you, Mickey? I would have died. Um, I think that I have recycled a lot of like shirts or like, Black pants and black top, obviously, is a go-to. Yeah. It's a yeah. state, yeah. you know? So the amount this of pictures why, that have been taken in black pants yeah. and black tank top are probably everyone. Yeah. Probably. This is why I suggest wearing ring. This is why I wear my ring gear at Comic-Cons and Animes, because that was my staple outfit. So if they had a picture, I got a picture in this outfit, I'm like, oh, I'm wearing it again. It doesn't matter. It's my ring gear. You know what I mean? True. Saves right. me a lot of a uh, headache and what to wear. You know? Yeah. Oh, you're so. Oh, I do not. I'm like, oh, I don't want to wear my ring gear. Least Except I when know. I wrestle. Yeah. I, I still get made fun of for the only girl wearing ring gear too. I think it's fine. cool. We we had a conversation on. Um, we want to give a shout out to, by the way to Nate the Great of the Game Changer Podcast. We love him so much. We just were on the uh, his podcast recently, and we'll we'll of course be back again. Nate's an awesome host, such a pro. And Lisa mentioned that she wears the ring gear. To Comic Cons, like she said, she loves Comic Cons, and people really go nuts for it. They they love that it's sort of like they're meeting the character, and then she does. Uh, we were commending her on these great poses where it's not just like okay, as I would do, you know, pop the hip, smile, cute, um, <laughs> like selfie face. I'm the worst, but Lisa <laughs> actually makes it a really fun experience because she'll do a normal photo, but then she'll go, okay, let's do kind of like a, I'll put a hold on you or something. Um, was that correct form? Not sure. But Lisa, that's why people love the ring gear, I think, because they just feel like they're meeting Lisa the wrestler. Right. Uh, yeah, I, that's what I feel like. They don't want to meet Lisa. They want to meet Victoria or Tara. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, that's why I just, you know, I'll, I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm very have comfortable so many in it. personalities. Um, you know, of course. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah, right? <laughs> Oh my God, they don't know. You guys know, this is the first episode. They don't know what they're in for, right? <laughs> there's, wait, there's second, more? I think. Whoa! What? Yellow okay, is I'm, my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, stop talking to me. She's hearing the voices. Okay, so I'm going to use a Lance Storm quote, and if I can be serious for a minute, love you, Lance. <laughs> uh, I am going to ask the question that's probably on everyone's minds. Why did we create grown ass women? Um, I will say, Mickey, we'll start with you because you were the one to come up with this amazing name. We all agreed that it really embodied what we were trying to put out there um, mm -hmm. as ladies in wrestling that are kind of, you know, veering into different, um, you know, journeys in our lives and things outside of wrestling. But if you can give us sort of like some reasons that you wanted to create this show and, and, and we'll all do the same. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, I have to give credit to Foxy. Because we honestly came up with this, Foxy, I love you. Uh, uh, Alicia Fox. Yes. Uh, we, were, you know, we traveled a lot when I came back, when I come back to WWE, we, we travel a lot on the road together. And um, we came up with this concept of grown ass woman. I started trying to get it over on television and they just did not, because they're like, you can't say ass. And I'm like, well, we can't say, a, we can say, we can make something. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm like, yeah, we say ass, come on. Who doesn't say ass anyway um so but we thought of this whole like concept of like i mean grown-ass women like we all are grown-ass women if you think about what we've done and how we've been able to manage and navigate the world of wrestling and, and acting and modeling and all these things lisa fitness and all these different worlds and to be successful and come out the other end and then have this life after wrestling and do all these things we're grown as women. We've had real life experiences and to be able to help people navigate those waters, I think it was really, really be important to me because I remember myself at 20 before I could say I was a grown ass woman. I was maybe a grown ass baby. Um, yeah. Thinking that thinking I was grown and trying to do a lot of these things. And, and I was like, how, what better way to like bring 
people that we love and just come together and talk about real world stuff, but in a lighthearted kind of way and be able to hit all those topics. And I don't want to sit here and talk about just wrestling because obviously people know us from wrestling, but at the same time, I think that people want to know the real side of us sometimes you know what i mean and to get to know what we have who we are and what we represent outside of the world of wrestling and that was like a cool thing and that's why i was like oh we have to we've talked about doing different things together before and I, and then as we're sitting right. there brain, i was like this is just feels it feels right and maybe we can empower a whole new generation or they could just listen to us sit around drink martinis and talk about nonsense that too very important nonsense right. very important but it's very important nonsense yeah but i but i have to i think include like it's like i think people have a, a misconception of what we are about you know um that character on tv we are not that 100 percent of the time we are that 10 percent of the time you know or maybe on our autograph sessions and stuff like that but we are complete normal people that go through the same things that everybody else does you know um financial um relationship problems on uh it's just everything like as a normal person, I think, uh, I think people assume we have it easy yeah. and we go through the same things everybody else does maybe. And, and it's just more exposed in our world. You know what I mean? But, yeah. um, I, I just, yeah, I, I just, I, I, you know, life after wrestling, you know, there, there is a life after wrestling. That's my point. Right. You know what I mean? It's not always going to be about wrestling, even though our love stems from wrestling, you know, our passion was that but we move on in that genre but we are grown-ass women that have moved on and mickey has a baby a family and um doing yard work val's doing still her fashionista and doing her photo shoots and um her high heels and stuff like that <laughs> changed at all i'm not a grown-ass woman at all i'm married and moved to london and then you know i'm here going back in the restaurant industry and living downtown and um starting a new relationship that kind of thing it's like we all go through that you know yeah and i think the problem is we we tend to do all these interviews which with all res due respect to the interviews that that we do in the podcast it's literally all it is about is about wrestling and how did you get started in wrestling and it's the same questions and you know we have so much more to talk about in terms of like lisa said relationships career paths uh things that we still want to do in our careers goals that we might have in life and love and, and jobs and mickey and i were speaking about this uh last week i was saying you know it's weird for me because i am such a girl's girl i have always been a girl's girl through and through and mm -hmm. when i was i loved wrestling but then you get into wrestling and you guys know you most of your friends are, are, are male and I tended to kind of like when I was doing house shows and stuff I always traveled with the guys I will say they were a lot less drama than the girls not gonna name names neither one of you but I'm just saying but a lot of the guys become you can become very close with these guys and you have guy friends and I think I really think I'm the type of girl that I wouldn't have many guy friends if, I, if it weren't for wrestling and I treasure those male friendships and it's wonderful and it becomes part of who you are and, and they teach you mm -hmm. things you know but I am a girl's girl through and through and I think what we can all agree on is that the concept of grown ass women is to, um, you know, make sure that we're relating to our female audience. You know, we hear you, we see you, we know that it's kind of a male dominated business, but we're girls, girls, and we're here to sort of, you know, empower you. And I know that you have already empowered us. So I think that's going to be fun uh, for us to kind of get some, some questions that are non wrestling related. Um, right. and speaking of non wrestling related stuff, um, we're going to do something every week or at least pretty often that we're going to call, uh, a social peak. You guys ready to do a little peek ski? Little peek ski. Little peek -ski. Little peek -ski. What is it? Little peek ski? Well, you know, we're all very active on. <laughs> it's kind of like a little. little I was doing a funny face. <laughs> Look at little gopher peak, little groundhog. Um, so I thought we would do a little, a little social deep dive, if you will. And we're all very active on social media. We'll make sure that you have all of our personal accounts as well. So we, you know, we do different things. We have different interests and things like that. Um, so we're going to do a little social peak ski. I'm going to start with Mickey because Mickey, um, in this crazy lockdown, you've been very productive and people I think would be interested to know that you have been doing a lot in terms of home decor, home renovation. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I mean, what can't you do? Um, well, I can't keep nails at the moment. So as soon as I realized that I wasn't going to be able to get my nails done and don't, uh, you know, what I mean? Look at that. Look at that. That's it. they're terrible. So I was like, you know what? There's all this like stuff that I needed to get done or say I'm gonna do, I just don't have the time, whatever. So I've been doing it. And so the other day, um, 
you know, we're here in Richmond. So I'm like, we're outside and I'm looking and I'm like, oh my God, all these sticks, the city never, they never came and picked them up. They never came and picked up the sticks that have fallen in the yard. You know, you pile them up in the pile. They never picked them yeah. up. But this, the neighbor guy was coming around. He comes by and he helps out, right? Like, and like, so he's like weed whacking around and I'm like, oh, Joe. And he's like, why don't you do this? And it's like covered in vines, this thing, this, I'm like, I don't really know what it is. It's been here forever. And he's like, it's a, it's a grill. It's an outdoor grill. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you just got to clear it all off and you burn it out. And then you just put some grates over it, or you can do roast, or you can smoke meat, or you can do all kinds. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then I went over and looked at it. Legit, it's an outdoor, like, massive grill. Like, you could put a whole hog on here if you wanted to. Not that I am going to, but you could if you wanted to, right? It's huge. So we ended up, not only did we burn it off, pull all the vines, cut those back, put all those off, set this thing on fire, like set the inside on fire to burn it all out. But like then pulled all those sticks that the city never got, put them all in the thing. And so now the bar backyard is um, beautiful, beautiful darling. I was, I was very impressed. We've actually got a clip of it now from your social media. Let's take a look at this. Wow. Yeah. Oh, they're cutting grass over there. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to build a train track out here? Yeah. Wow. What are the pieces? Oh, we need some archways to come down. Don't you think? Hey, do you see this thing? This was covered, as you can see, in this ivy that I have scraped off the entire thing because I didn't know that this was an outdoor grill. And then in the meantime, while I was burning all this stuff that I pulled off, also a huge pile of sticks here i just uploaded the last pile of sticks on there and then as you can see i cleaned out all this underbrush and pulled out all the sticks from underneath these trees and then picked up all the sticks in the yard see that's what i'm talking about like you're a singer extraordinaire wrestler but who knew you have home renovations on your resume huh? i'm so proud of myself i couldn't be more proud of myself <laughs> so if you need any work done call me my rates are pretty high, I'll be honest. She's very hard to come by. Lisa, uh, and uh, I don't know, some good jams. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lisa, yeah. Dino Island, I'm going to go to you next. Um, I saw on your social media, it was so cute, so funny, a clip that we're going to show you in just a second. Um, Lisa, do you want to set up the clip that we're going to see? Um, you know, uh, there's a chef at the Buca de Beppo, and he is like, his name's Omar, and he's always super positive, regardless of the day. If we're slow, we're busy. He's just one of those people that you gravitate to. He just, uh, and he always, uh, he plays, you know, Alexis, play this. Alexis, what do you want to listen to? I go, Selena or Coronado. And um, so every time I see him, we always sing a song. It's like Coronado, 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 not Nado. I don't know who the artist is, but um, it's, uh, you know, it, it makes the environment at work really positive and stuff like that and um you know we gravitate to those people we hate the yeah. negative nellies right you know but um, i'm having a blast um doing the restaurant thing again i'll be honest with you it's, i know it's so normal people are like you're back in the restaurant industry but it's still being social you know what i mean i'm not one i'm not a desk job kind of gal you know what I, mean? I still need to be amongst people and um you know I'm, I'm lucky to be with this company that does a lot of charity and stuff like that so um I'm having fun. I'm just, I'm just living the life and trying to be a, a normal life where I walk to work. I don't even need a car. I'm like downtown, four blocks away from work, and then I go take a walk. Beautiful, you know. And I have the homeless. Like a, that's going to be another episode when we talk about the homeless. Oh hell yeah! Got some good clips on that. Well, I know. We're having fun at work, and we love to see it. So this clip cracked me up. We're going to uh, take a look at this clip right now. It's Omar, right? Is it Chef Omar? Omar, yeah. All right. Take a look at Chef Omar here and how much fun he's having. It's impossible to watch this clip and not have fun. <laughs> Amazing, and, and I, know. I love that it's an environment like you said. We gravitate towards these fun people. It's been 
so fun to watch those videos, Lisa. And of course, like I said, I'll put all of our social channels up there. For me, uh, my social media has been very themed, uh, and it's to no one's surprise. I've done a little bit of a, a an '80s theme, if you will. I'm a huge fan of the show Glow, which we actually have so many friends on that show. Do you guys watch Glow, by the way? Oh, absolutely. I've watched. I watch every episode. Yeah. Amazing. I love little, it. Little 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 known fact is like Chavo um, does helps the wrestlers out on that show. Yes. So that's, it's amazing. Chavito. Chavito. It is my mission in life to get Chavo on Grown Ass Women because little known fact, oh. Chavo is one of the girls. And we say that not, not in, in threatened to his manhood, totally. but we love Chavo and he'd be great on the show. So take a look at my little, uh, my little shoots I've been doing. And here's a, a little tribute to Glow Wrestling. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh, mamacita. Uh -huh. Ooh. Very hot. Well, as you see, I did sort of a glow photo shoot. I, I do different themes, and I just love an excuse. I mean, of course I'm going to love the 80s. It's big hair and glitter and just crazy makeup, so why the hell not? I love that. Um, have you guys been uh, missing photo shoots or missing doing, like, getting glammed up? Because I'll tell you what, everyone that I talk to does not want to wear makeup during this lockdown. They don't want to be in anything but but sweats, but I feel like some days I don't want to, and other days I'm like, I have to do it just to keep my sanity and feel like myself again. I put on makeup and I'm like, oh, there she is. Forgot <laughs> to I could totally see you being like that. Yeah. I've enjoyed, I mean, I've been in workout clothes probably most, if I'm not in workout clothes, I'm in pajamas, unless I have to get dressed. Like I literally had to get ready for this. So I did I. I got dressed and ready for you guys. Aww. So did I. And um, I, you'll see me in a bun, workout clothes, or pajamas, and literally no makeup. I'm just, I'm just, I'm enjoying um, this a lot. I'm just like, I, I don't like to get glammed up. I'm such a tomboy anyway. And, uh, oh, but Val, you live in heels. Your feet hurt when you wear flats. <laughs> I so, definitely trip more when I'm wearing flats. I, I do the thing at the airport. I'll never forget, I wore a pair of Uggs, excuse my language, at the airport one time. And it was so flat footed that I, I kept tripping and it was like all rubbery on the bottom. I was like, what is this? Ugh, I don't hear the click clack, it freaks me out. <laughs> and I kept tripping and I would do the thing that, have you ever done like a trip where you like, you trip and then you look behind you like, what the hell was that? But you know good and well that it was just you. So you go, oh, what was that? <laughs> Are you look like, stupid, but then it, you do, yeah. I trip in Uggs all the time. I feel like they, the toe, I can't get my, maybe I'm daisy clipping, as my grandmother would say. You're daisy clipping because you're not picking your toes up high enough. But maybe because the heels, you just automatically like clip, clop, clip, clop. Whereas That's a good wrestler the Uggs, name. you literally have to like pick and paddle your foot up. Yeah. It's like. It's a whole other thing that you, that you do. Yeah. Which reminds me, when you say clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, what? Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, bang. Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. An Amish drive by. <laughs> okay. What? There's my ADHD going off right there. <laughs> and here with the joke of the week was Lisa. That was, I didn't know where you were going with that joke. I was like, what? what? I thought we you were rapping. We, we both were scared. You guys had the wide eyeball, like, oh no, what's she going to say? What's she gonna <laughs> say? Oh my God. Like, oh, where's she going with this? Where, where's this going to go? Where's this train wreck? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lisa, can I ask you something? Are you hot over there or what? <laughs> you know what? This, this, this onesie? Oh my God. I'm going to donate this to um, the home on, in winter because this is burning up. I'm like, it's a sauna oh. in here. At one point, I look over and forget what you were doing, and she's like this. <sighs> <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, do you mind if I put my ponytail up right now? Yes. You can do it. What? We're keeping it casual here on Grown Ass uh, with it, and I and I hate to okay. tell y'all, but it's it's that time that we're gonna hate on our weekly show that it is time to wrap it up. But you guys, oh. um, I had so much fun, and make sure that you guys uh, subscribe. We're gonna put all the social media handles uh, after the show, and I can't think of a better way to end the show than Lisa's <laughs> clip flop joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, any final thoughts? No, I'm so excited. Cheers. Cheers, yes. ladies. Yay. Yay. We'll Yay. see you next week. Grown ass women. Yes, Love don't forget, guys, use that hashtag. Uh -huh. Hashtag Gaw TV. We're going to put all of our social media handles. Make sure you're following. We want to hear from you. Join the conversation with hashtag Gaw TV. And next week, we have some really exciting news. We are going to introduce you 
to a very special locale, low sugar and low carb wine. Yes, you heard me right. Especially the ladies are going to love that one. That's next week. And we also are going to introduce you to the GAW Ga Grown Ass Women of the Week. We're going to nominate someone very, very special and talk about it next week. So guys, thank you for joining us here on Grown Ass Women Episode 1. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Love you guys. I love you guys.